G'day and welcome to the 52nd episode of the Destiny Down Under podcast. This week, we're joined by Big Grizzly. We talk over the Curse of Osiris announcement, the trailer, all of the good stuff that comes along with that, and everything we can expect out of the faction rally that starts next week. That and a whole lot more. Stick around. G'day and welcome to the Destiny Down Under podcast, the 52nd episode, I believe. This week, we are wholeheartedly brought to you by our dear sponsor, Technical Fucking Difficulty. We're sorry we're a little bit late. <laughs> there were a bit, there were issues. <laughs> Lot of, lots of them. Holy shit. So, um, how, are we all okay? Are we all... Are we all calm enough? I, I think so. I, no, look, I, I reckon so. we need a we need a round table debrief about technical issues. Fair yeah. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go first? Let's start with yeah. let's start with our guest. Let's start with Beard. Welcome all Beard. right. <laughs> so first, hi guys, how's it going? Yeah, welcome, oh, Beard. You haven't been on for a yeah, really. It's nice to see you. Anyway, what are your gripes? <laughs> yes. Oh God. So Skype has actually done a number of different things this past week. Uh, which I was actually fighting up until like 15 minutes ago when I ended up walking in the damn door. Thank frick. Uh, when all is said and done, though, they've actually made it more of a spyware uh, system than ever. So, by the way, looking at changing that, maybe. Um, but <laughs> it's been nothing but like left and right with my webcam. Uh, it has been nothing but left and right with my with fighting Skype, and then it's been nothing but left and right with freaking fighting D2 and either Shadow Play or Capture Card or something else. This week can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just, just straight. This week can go to hell. And I'm thankful Beautiful. because I've got another hour of sleep tonight because I'm in the Americas, of course, and I do that weird thing called daylight savings. So, <laughs> Thank God for small mercies, man. That is a serious mm -hmm. mug. Every time you come on, I'll, I'll look at that. Your your cup and just holy shit! All right, uh, um, Alan. It is Alan, water. I would like to state it isn't vodka. I wish it was, but moving on. Alan from the Hangover in the box down below me. <laughs> What's your gripes, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Aside from me. <laughs> right. GPU's dying, CPU's <laughs> dying. I fucking connected to Skype earlier on and I had no fucking camera. My mic's busted. My fucking audio system's gone to shit. <laughs> I just, I, I have no fucking idea on what, what even is life at the moment. Like, fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. That, and you've got that weird issue with your camera again when you, where you kind of look like you're in 16-bit oh, yeah. colour. <laughs> Looks like looks like I've got fucking glandular fever again because Skype's a fucking spyware piece of shit, fucking useless piece of crap. I just <laughs> just tune into slot streams if you want to see what his skin tone actually like looks like IRL because it's fucking weird. Oh, uh, Maddie, yes. come on, your turn. <laughs> get out the work yeah, out the bad juju, man. Get it out. We're gonna get it out, and then we're gonna be happy oh. for the rest of the cast, right? So I woke up this morning. I actually, I don't know if you can. First mistake see. right there. <laughs> there's, there's, I bought a, I bought some, I, I wanted a new microphone for streaming rather than the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti is great for um, recording YouTube videos when you put it in a recording box, but it picks up just too much stuff for streaming. And, and I wanted, mm -hmm. I don't like how, it's, it's very bulky to put on a, a microphone, boom, etc. So I went and bought a new microphone. What'd you get? I got the, um, Audio, Audio Technica, the AT2035, oh, right? Oh, why? Oh, shut, shut up. Man. Shut up. Right? I, this is why I wasn't going to bring it up. This is why I wasn't going to bring it up, okay? And I was like, right, I've got a little mix amp for it, whatever. I open it up. There's no fucking cable in there, is it? It's just the microphone. There's no way to connect the fucking microphone to the mix amp. I was not aware that I needed to order a cable <laughs> for the microphone. And it costs... Two hundred and forty dollars. I expected there to be some sort of connection cable between the fucking microphone and the mix amp, but not knowing much about audio, I realised that that was an unrealistic expectation. Matt, they, okay. <laughs> they were too close to bargain. They, they would have made no money on it if they'd shipped it with the cable. Come on, it's not a charity. So, <laughs> that was my that was my start this morning, and then oh. um, okay, right. Firstly, then, the fuck, Matt. <laughs> you could have spoken to Log, 
or myself or Sassy or About the fucking what? hundreds of people who are in your stream who could have told you that AT never ship with fucking XLR cables. Ever. I wouldn't have known that. I don't own yeah, one. But I don't know. I, I, don't I can know post you was... a cable. I can, like, I've got heaps. Mm. Fucking like, Christ. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, would, I, hold on. Let's just back up a second. So is that... Okay, obviously you knew that was an audio technical... Te- is that like a weird audio technica thing? They don't yes. ship them with cables. They don't ship them with XLR cables because they want you to buy them. Okay. Yeah. So that like so it was sort of reasonable for me to be raging this morning about not having a cable. Was Absolutely. Okay. Okay. But you see this? You see this right here? This yeah. this is a road. That's where you went wrong because you bought a fucking oh, AT and not a God. road. Oh god, let's I did a little uh, anyway. Let's and not I get into that. Remote. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, eat a and dick. Other, Come um, on. Do we do we title this one Aussies Complain About Sound? Is that yeah. what we're going to be doing for, <laughs> for this podcast title? The Destiny Down Under Bitch Fest. <laughs> so I'll be filming oh, my podcast right. for the rest of the fucking rest of the podcast. <laughs> so, so my issue, right, is um, now I, I'm a lazy individual. I mean, that's probably not a surprise to anyone. So I've got all of my shit set up. All the Log Power Slave stuff lives in Google Chrome. And then, so they don't have to fucking punch in passwords and bullshit, I have Edge set up with all the DDU stuff on it, so we're just logging in. And guess what? Today, Edge decided every time you try and type something, I crash. And I'm like, what? What? And I thought, no, that can't be right. I'm going to shut it down or restart it. And I went, no worries, trying to change the fucking stream title because Beard's here. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be introducing syntax. No. Nope. So, that hopefully we made everyone else feel better about their Sunday or Saturday nights and <laughs> technical difficulties. Thank yeah, you for really. the sponsor, Technical Difficulties. I'm sure we'll be a long-time sponsor and a very <laughs> lucrative sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, know, I don't know about lucrative. Maybe lucrative for them. Uh, <laughs> log, it says bead grizzly. Bead? It says bead grizzly <laughs> Well, come on, man. I did it on my phone. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll try and change hey, no, let's, it. Let's I'll try and change it, but no promises, right? Bead Grizzly. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I mean, I guess I could just restart everything and just retitle myself. That's fine. Why it, seems, not? it seems the only reasonable solution. But, Beard, you are our <laughs> guest, man. How are you? It's been a while. It's been probably, what, six months since you've been on? I've had a fair while. So, what's. What's been happening? How have you been? What have you been up to? I'm going to say it has been a while because I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, man, I, I just got like brought on to Focus Fire full time. And I'm like, I haven't been on DDU in a long freaking time. That freaking scrub Matt just doesn't like inviting me or something. Like, jeez, <laughs> what is this? No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I've been, uh, I've been enjoying myself. I've uh, been enjoying Destiny 2 quite a bit too, minus the, the, the couple actual bitch fests that I've actually posted on my channel. Uh, but for you know what I've been enjoying about it most, I've been loving the Warlock again. I've been loving dipping into that. Uh, Voidwalker has still been the subclass that I go for, uh, which I'm kind of surprised with. I didn't change how I played almost at all. Uh, but it just feels it feels better. It feels more rounded. It feels more attuned to what I would expect it to be. And it's nothing but improvements. That's the thing that I love about it. Well, at least you're having a good time, mate, and I, I do appreciate that. Seems now, seems now, like I'm not saying I'm not saying the game's bad or anything like that, but seems now this morning that we've all had, or this evening mm. for you, it's I'm glad that you're having a good time with it because fuck me swinging, I'm having a fucking awful time with everything at the moment. So good on you, dude. It's all right, Sophie. You, just mate. take just take a minute, have a few deep breaths. Have a fucking. Does it, does it help if I just send good vibes your way with, with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, if, you're, like, if, you're, if you're in the stream the chat, like just behind. send Sloth all your hugs, all your cute <laughs> emotes, make him happy. But so, Beard, you're playing, you started out on PlayStation and you've, are, you, are you fully transitioning to the PC or are you going to do both? What's your plan, man? Probably going to be both. Uh, yep. Mostly because I have too many friends that are playing PS4. That's, I think, still going to end up being my main thing. The PC is primarily going to be there for the sake of, like, capturing footage because YouTube and 4K and all that. Uh, 
a long story short, it'll effectively just come down to like being a, a footage capture more than anything else. Uh, I I don't know if I want to put too much into it because again, with nobody there to kind of play with, it's a little hard to really get into the game. You, you start to almost realize that about Destiny, about how much the community realistically matters when you start <laughs> to play it or having people around. Because I get yeah. so bored being alone when it comes to playing the game. I found that, yeah. and it was something that I'd actually, I've, I've got a piece of paper that I wrote that down on and is not in this room, so it serves no purpose, but I'm glad you reminded me, <laughs> is that this week, my experience with Destiny 2 has been one of, like, I've, I've this is my second week on the PC, I didn't get a whole heap of time straight off launch, but I'm, I'm now in the end game, and um, I'm just finding that, like, it is fucking hard to find people to play with, and it has only been out for two weeks, it is, I mean, yeah. obviously there's a different crowd, like... I mean, I'm from the Xbox. All my mates are on the Xbox. I know a fair few people on PlayStation. And then PC is sort of like the only people I know on PC now have transitioned across. So there's no PC, PC mm -hmm. players that I really know. So I guess the one thing that's really rammed home is how important having that fucking group of people to play with is. It's crazy. Yeah. And like, it's, 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 it's something that I've I'd, I'd totally taken for granted up until this point. So I guess... For nothing else, I mean, the PC, I, um, we spoke about it briefly last week. I've been really enjoying it. I've finally got to the point where I'm getting familiar guns and things like that, and, and it just feels mm. so good. Like, I think whatever the balancing of, uh, like, we, we were talking before stream went live, Beard, about Bloom with hand cannons, things like that. Sassy's in the chat. Right. He'll know a hell of a lot more, and I'm sure that he'll be you know, <laughs> willing to tell me that what the difference is. But it, it just seems that the recoil is so much easier or like to control and i'm playing on controller so i'm a pleb <laughs> i'll make no apologies but it's it's a different thing so i don't know but i mean i've got you on there beard you can play with me we'll play together we'll at least be two of us yeah. <laughs> i gotta yeah. say at least we've got Yay. two there at that point we just need four more for a raid so well yeah. you know what the the I best think... the best thing i've actually seen with the pc at least for our clan um i'm not sure about yours matt or yours beard but the the it it it's good to see that our our Discord is getting more and more active in that respect. Um, on the PC side, like a, a lot of it was it was a very blank, very very blank Discord room, and now it's a lot of people are like, oh shit, we have people on PC. I jumped in last night, and there was um three uh, two dudes from the clan and log, and I've, I've been checking it out all week, and there's been five or six people in there at any one any given time, which is actually really mm -hmm. sort of good to see and people are sort of picking up on the uh on the pc stuff so which is which is which is pretty cool um i, I like that I, I like the fact that people have either transitioned across or they've actually gone and picked up the game and gone oh shit there's a community here fuck me well might as well join these drunk idiots um <laughs> I yeah like that's I. Um, um, that, you're touching a valid point sloth and it was one of the things that i kind of struggled with in that with PC, there, there is no real like embedded framework like joining an Xbox Live party. And I guess, so, sorry, Bid, we just this is what we do tangents. But um, I I I started a chat you know, like a Discord chat server, basically that was just like a PC social one. So if you're on PC and you're fucking not doing anything in particular, jump in and have a chat. There's no purpose to it. Just get in there and talk shit. And if you run a Discord server for a clan, I recommend that you do the same, especially if you're on PC, because while on Xbox or um, PlayStation, the economy in that respect will sort of always be the default, like the PlayStation chat or the Xbox party chat. Uh, with PC, to have that there, a way that people can easily just jump in and meet each other without having to be like, hi, I'm in your clan, do you want to play a game? <laughs> it's it's definitely, definitely something that I've found sort of, it's worked so far. So, I mean... I it's it's got a long way to go the old pc clan if you're looking for a pc clan oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well what is uh, now that you're uh, on the as log and matt call it the master race i I'm don't just, call that i'm just i, I just play the game oh fuck off you said it last <laughs> night i'll find the vod as well um <laughs> oh shit did i um, yes you did you absolutely was, did you i was just trying to upset you you know what the real master race is having one of all of the platforms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, now, now that you've played it on play, uh, PlayStation and PC, Beard, uh, what's your favourite PC in-game content at this point in time um, in Destiny 2? Uh, right now, it's anything Adventures. I think that uh, Adventures as a whole are basically 
to me the game, but they're also the thing that actually touch base on the the lore a lot more, uh, which obviously, of course, that's what I'm more interested in. Uh, but I think that's where they put the bulk of it, it, at least in a in a larger sense, versus where you end up seeing like the the lore tabs and stuff like that. Uh, but the mm-hmm. adventures, I think, are a welcome addition because you don't in the in the main story you don't spend a lot of time on certain planets like Io. I feel like you're on Io for all of like two minutes and you're yep. done. It goes so fast. So yeah, to go I, back I just started and actually replaying see those, yeah. the campaigns, and I just realized how short or how limited amount of time you actually spend on yeah. like it's only like two missions for the most part. I think I'm up to Io now, and Nessus was like literally two missions. I think. Yeah, twenty yeah. minutes, man. <laughs> you can blitz it. Um, I'm gonna say if they didn't have the level restrictions put in there. I think the game itself would have ended up being quite a bit shorter. But yeah, it was literally like two missions per planet. And then they kind of have you go a little bit on the backtracking side before you get to the Almighty, and that's it. It's, go go do some leveling and come back. But I think that that's that, that's very, very much like a Destiny vanilla thing. That's oh, very yeah. much... That, that, that's, uh, we'll, we'll get into the thought process behind that very, very shortly. But... Um, Look, if you want to hit that news button, ladies and wait, gentlemen, we'll get straight into the news. Wait, 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 wait. Matt's wait, got a thing. Could we do one more thing? Yeah. No, no, um, Bid briefly mentioned about joining Focus Fire Chat, and I know this is Bid's, like, multiple time being on, but can you just give a little bit brief about Focus Fire Team Chat and how that links with your YouTube channel? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, Focus Fire actually welcomed me on full-time now. Uh, I was on for like Congratulations. three or four. Thank you. Uh, I was on for like three or four episodes prior. Uh, and then there was like two weeks in a row that I ended up being on. And then Jay was like, hey, you want to come on full time? Um, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, well, yes. Anyway, um, I, largely it comes down to the way that my brain is versus theirs. I think uh we're both on the spin foil side. We we both though kind of look for like the the truths and the lore, and so on and so forth, as I think a lot of lore channels do to begin with. But when all is said and done, I think we we jive very well with the way that we think. Uh, and mm. for being able to to kind of build up that community a little further, I think is between the two of us kind of joining is is perfect in that respect. And I know a lot of people have kind of, granted, I just kind of said it here, where it's us joining. I don't necessarily see it that way. It's still one entity. I'm just somebody that's a, a guest as a host that is on there. Uh, and realistically, I am absolutely flattered that they even wanted me around. I'm still trying to figure out why you blokes wanted me on. Um, <laughs> but it just comes down to, you know, the base idea. Like, I'm, I'm absolutely flattered that I'm, I'm even invited to these kind of things. Um but the the whole idea behind uh, us working together is just, I think, perfect. Uh, but yeah, uh, just us the same thinking goes into it. Uh, the the way that we kind of handle each other for uh, lore, so on, uh, just works very well. And if you guys get a chance to actually listen to any episodes at all, they're posted on YouTube, they're posted on Twitch, uh, and I know there is a uh, iTunes spot that is there as well uh, that you can download and listen to on the go. That's I think I think one of the one of the areas that separates yourself, Beard, and also the guys from Focused uh, Fire Chat is a little bit more incorporation of like real world science or or philosophies and that. I, I definitely have to speak with Blue at um, Guardian Con and even just in general. Like a lot of your videos will reflect back on, you know, if it's a void and black holes or real planets, uh, which is something that I almost never do because it's really outside my comfort zone so i think mm. if, if people like the law um and also people like that sort of probably coming back to sort of real world context for sort of mm-hmm. framing destiny i think like that's a perfect marriage between yourself and uh focus fire chat i think it's one yeah, of those things that it that really it grounds destiny as much as it is ridiculous you know, in the future, run around playing space magics and, you know, all these, this sort of, you know, a made up shit. When you, when you bump into those things that are kind of like, that grounded in the reality, like that you can tie across that, are, that, that Bungie puts so much work into that sort of subtext, like the heliopause and all that sort of stuff. I, I think that, mm-hmm. you know, it's, that's, that's rewarding. I love, I love, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, I oh, know shit about it, but I like learning from Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say that the the way that they've uh, 
kind of incorporated everything, even as as brief as I can make this. Uh, the the way that they did like the stuff with the outer rim and Rise of Iron, yeah. and then being able to say, well, what is the outer rim considered today? You know, yeah. just just being able to kind of counter that all back with like tracking down Effort Deep and all this. I'll I'll continue to go back to that that first lore video I did on Effort Deep because it was that important to me for sparking my imagination on on this kind of stuff. Uh, but again, yeah, kind of touching back to even what uh, uh, Matt had said too, like Blue focuses so much more on the history. I focus very much on the science, and I think in yep. the middle, yeah, we just find that that perfect mix that just makes it all work. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a really good point. Yeah, because I know I I I, I, don't, I really noticed that at Guardian Con, um, how Blue would bring up a lot of history stuff or explaining lore. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, especially Osiris. Especially with uh, uh, with Callus, because that's been interesting too. <laughs> yeah, there's so much Roman <laughs> tie. Yeah, with with all the spin foil theories and all that sort of thing, I actually really enjoy when I do my OCD cleaning of the house. I actually do thoroughly lo love listening to uh, Beard's videos on his own channel and the FFC, um, which is. Uh, I learn a little bit when I do sort of uh, take it in, but I, I mainly listen to him because he's got quite a good voice as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, guys, I do, I do, do seriously. If you're watching this on live on Twitch, or if you're watching this on YouTube, or listening uh, to the various uh, audio podcast outlets that we do um, post this on, please go and check out Beard Grizzly. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Beard Grizzly. Uh, beard underscore Grizzly. Grizzly. I can't remember yes, off the top of my yes, head. Beard, yeah, underscore, beard grizzly. underscore Yeah, you got it. Beard under, underscore Grizzly um, for all of the uh, all of the, the good YouTube stuffs. So if he, he is on par with uh, this bull fed in the top right corner. Um, <laughs> Easily. I wouldn't I would say above. <laughs> oh, I would say above. Too humble. Too We're having to start a fight, too Matthew, humble. for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Law fight. No, but, um, <laughs> please go and check him out, guys. But thusly, ladies and gentlemen, we shall get back into the spin four theories and the uh, upcoming DLC and all that sort of thing. But we have some news to get to, so log if you want to hit that button. Hit that mm. shit. News. Good news. So, ladies and gentlemen, this week in the TWAB, and also, which was actually brought to my attention live on stream on my personal channel um, by uh, Zebra with a Sword, um, Curse of Osiris reveal trailer. Now, that is... Very exciting. The amount of lore that comes with that and the amount of things, uh, the, the amount of things like uh, time travel and all that sort of goodness. Oh, all that sort of little... Mm, num, 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 num. All that goodness is uh, has been released. So if you haven't seen it, youtube.com forward slash... Uh, just, just go search Destiny 2. Just, It'll be right up the top there. Please go and check it out. It is absolutely amazing it is such an amazing trailer oh, um, they've done it really really well with it um Fantastic. now uh quickly the it lo seems to be the jade rabbit and the telesto are making a return at least in the trailer we'll get to that a little bit more in a bit now we have some upcoming reveal streams before the release of curse of osiris dlc 11 a.m pacific uh wednesday november 15th so next week uh learn about the places you'll go the characters you meet and the enemies you'll fight now that's uh basically we're going to be fighting uh, from what i can gather in my very limited law knowledge we're going to have old vex new vex or sorry past vex future vex and present i think all, all, of vex. all of the vex all of the vex <laughs> all of the vex all of the vex so that first um, stream sounds like campaign yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. which should be should be a lot of fun um we are also so the week following week the following tuesday we have 11 a.m pacific uh november 21 uh watches preview some of the new activities that will challenge you and your fire team now i we we have some we have some um thoughts i, I dare say we have some thoughts i don't have any because i'm thick as two short planks i'm reading off a card here but uh <laughs> beard Matt, well, definitely has some thoughts here on that we'll get to that in a little bit and the following week after, 11 a.m. Pacific, Wednesday, November 29th, inspect the new inventories and see it all in, uh, in action on a brand new Crucible map. Now, gentlemen, let's what are your dive thought in. processes? Let's on, dive in let's, on this let's, trailer. Because it was just, yeah, let, let, I made my whole family trailer. sit down and watch it. Just shut mm -hmm. up. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. What, did you enjoy this? I demand it. 
Well, I know Beard did a, um, a trailer analysis. I haven't got that far yet, but I think I've taken note of most of the important stuff. So why don't you let us know, Beard, what was your top sort of things discovered in that trailer? Mm. Well, I mean, the first biggest thing is when Osiris, of course, pops out from there. I know you and I have actually discussed it a little bit on stream for as much as text while you're rating this discussion. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, when Osiris pops out from the portal, it does look like it. Uh, he's actually producing himself into the Vault of Glass. And there's mm -hmm. a couple of frozen guardians in the background that you can see it in a couple of different mm -hmm. scenes, uh, mm -hmm. which ties back to a couple of different questions was that us that was there and it was Osiris that did everything or is that another fire team that he took part in? There's a lot of different questions that kind of spur from that. Um, mm -hmm. Secondarily, it also comes down to, is that Mercury? Uh, also what time periods uh, necessarily like wh where are we ending up like uh, popping out of uh, through these blue portals that exist? Uh, side note, those portals, for some reason, I don't know why, really make me think of the stuff that the uh, the Dead Orbit Ghost Fragment talked about, the Sophia. They really kind of make me jive back to that thought. I don't know why. Uh, and then the last, if uh, if it's a top three, uh, the last really big thing, uh, no Saint-14 that we see so far. Uh, they also do mention that uh, this, this is actually a big one, though. Ikora is not sure if Osiris is going to be an enemy or is going to uh, be an ally for us either. And I, I'm kind of glad that they're still leaving that up uh, in the air for the time being. Um, so but that, surely that that's being, just like to new players. Yeah. Like, well, I, don't I mean, know. that being said, like, I've, <laughs> like you, you guys know, and like I've, I've been playing since fucking Alpha Vanilla um, D1. And I only started getting into law when I actually um, hooked up with fucking Log and Matty. But um, he was outlawed from the from the vanguard. He was he was, you know, banished from from being part of the Guardian mm. world per se. So who's to say that he hasn't spent ten thousand years in the Vex network? Um, with figuring a, out what the fuck's going on. With a savage chip on his shoulder being sent there to begin yeah, with. Well, I mean, that's savage. exactly right. I so. mean, I, I think undoubtedly he's going to be an ally. I, I think mm. that was just... Same. But just um, for the sake of, of keeping some mystery. But I think um, I agree on all those points with Vault of Glass, really interesting. Uh, confirms his subclass or that he can use Dawnblade, which is pretty interesting because we always knew he was a solar based class uh from previous grimoire cards they always talk about him being extremely bright um and difficult to look at particularly with the meeting with uh, the uh queen of the reef um but something i i'm still in sort of I, I really don't know what to think about previous subclasses whether they existed or not and i just i did realize that in the warlock mission when you're unlocking your um new subclasses you actually i think there's a scan that or a, a hologram that actually mentions the sun singers so yes they're sort of mentioned but i mean i was surprised he was a dawn blade put it that way yeah it was well, yeah, I mean, sassy brings up a valid point in chat where he actually says that he actually has the blade like the physical blade that he that that the so like in in the in the uh, in the trailer so i didn't notice that but he did now that you bring it up but um no it's 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 pretty pretty freaking incredible um also on the bit that i know a little bit more about um bungie's infatuation with uh firefly um, has uh, reared its head again. Yeah. Where we've got Nathan Fillion, um, who obviously plays Cade, but we have Marina Baccarin, who is playing Osiris's ghost, who played, uh, I can't remember her name now, but the prostitute from Firefly. Um, <laughs> just uh, sell her. Name, name just the hooker from Firefly. <laughs> she's Deadpool's Mrs. But, in Deadpool, right? Yeah, she's Deadpool's yeah, Mrs. Right. in Deadpool. Like, she's... Um, she's an amazing actress. I'm actually very yeah. excited to see what Bungie have written for her. Um, Inara, thank you, Pentalo. Yeah, um, yes. uh, yeah, Inara, which is which is absolutely incredible. Um, she, like Cade, uh, like Nathan Fillion, are, are both incredible actors. So, 
Um, it just adds to the pool of incredible actors that come with Destiny, um, which is which is kind of kind of incredible. I'm gonna the, put my uh, I'm gonna put my spinfoil hat on right now, and I reckon mm-hmm. you know the you know the Colonel Cade's chicken. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I reckon that the Colonel was voiced by Alan Tudyk. <laughs> because you go look through Alan Tudyk's history of shit that he's done, and he has played a disproportionate number of chickens to any other actor. Moana, <laughs> the chicken, hey hey. Alan too, like, guarantee it. I'm serious too. I'm like, he's there there's a guest there's role in there. Inevitable betrayal. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the day that they bring in the, the, the day that they bring in Alan Tudok and um, uh, Alan Tudok and Adam Baldwin. Yeah, Adam Baldwin. Yeah. Um, that it, it, it's going to be complete. They just <laughs> need to bring in uh, what's her face, uh, River Song, and um, you know, full cast. We're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they <laughs> oh, can find a way. The other uh, thing I wanted to say about the trailer that I think mm. was really interesting is the appearance of Osiris's Sunbreaker gauntlets yes. that uh, look electric. like... Mm, well, they're not. They don't look like they're solar-based. They they've got, like, Vex milk in them, yep. which um, if you look at some of the new weapons that they've put on the T-Wab... They've actually got Vex milk running through them as well. So I think that will be a theme for Vex armor and Vex weapons from this DLC. And it will tie into the story for how to defeat the Vex. Yep. Shoot them with their mm. own milk. They're lactose the milk, intolerant. Baby. They're milk lactose guns. intolerant. Yes. <laughs> well, you heard I it was, here first. Uh, I, I was running it through. I forget if that was actually in in stream and we were talking about that matter if it was after but i know there was the theory and the thought that that those gauntlets because they're infused with like uh the radiolaria could possibly allow for osiris to travel through the vex network yep. like that's, that's exactly what allows him to to yep. kind of move through that's exactly what i'm thinking that, is that yeah. you combine that with all the previous cyrus lore about becoming liquid moving through through moving through time and you talk about vex cells being viruses and you look at cage six and how he got trapped and how he sort of infected by that network and then yeah i think uh, the you know we can keep physically destroying vex but that's not gonna work no. so you gotta fight a virus with a virus which mm-hmm. i think mm. will bring in this whole vex cell thing so it's, right. it's just a serious yep. question I've got for for those more uh, esteemed in law than myself, which is basically anyone. Uh, on watching the um, the trailer, I had I noticed something. Now, Osiris is dressed like a chicken. Did he get like banished on Halloween or something? Or what's the? Is there some kind of law basis for that? Can we? Is there a reason? I gave you my reason for that, and I already told you because I named my thumbnail that. That was my entire reason for saying that. I said Osiris, more like Horsiris, spelled O H O R I S I S I R S. The reason Don't even because oh, look how triggered chat is. I know, I know, I know. The kind triggered chat basically is based on Horus. It is not based on Osiris at all, and it drove me nuts. The the moment I saw it, I'm like, that's not. Wait a minute, that's an eagle. Why? Stop! Yeah. Stop the trip! Why? Anyway, no, that's all right. I've Look, read a f- I've you're read as a f- bad as bloody Sillet. You're as <laughs> oh, bad yeah. as bloody Sillet. He was sitting in my chat, trolling everyone, saying it was a chicken. It's a chicken. <laughs> no. Come oh, on, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find something to laugh about. Oh, I've read oh, a few Wilbur Smith. I've read a few Wilbur Smith books. I know what I'm fucking talking about. Egypt and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was right. just, it's weird. Maybe it's not. just an, clearly <laughs> just a completely aesthetic thing, right? His appearance. Well. There are some possibilities behind it, but it, on a, a completely side note, it does go ahead and present the possibility that that is an Osiris, which I know is 100% false. We know for a fact that is Osiris because I doubt that Benji would be that bad to us. Uh, but on the on the other side note, it does end up indicating uh, something about Osiris himself because Horus and Osiris in Egyptian lore and mythology do have a lot of tiebacks to each other. So it's not... 100 percent out of the realm of possibility that he would have that headdress or look that way but it is still weird and osiris's base idea though is a snake and through what we know more about vice and all the stuff that they have that's all venom based 
and that would end up passing back to how Osiris could have possibly work too. Not to say they have a connection, but simply the idea that like Venom is a big uh, a big theme within Destiny Two. I think I think the biggest takeaway note in my mind anyway is that Bungie use you know Egyptian mythology as inspiration. They're not going to follow it to the yeah. T. So the fact that he looks like a different Egyptian god sort of just confirming that, all right, we've taken inspiration for a theme, but maybe don't look into it too much. Yeah, it's, a, it's about the Marbo of it. It's about the Marbo of Definitely. it. It's about the vibe. <laughs> well, and that arguably between, uh, if you start talking Egyptian lore, what are the first couple things that you think of? The the eagle is a very big thing uh, for sure. Uh, the, the Sphinx is another big one. And Anubis is another large one for sure. So All humans. Yeah, the the just the base idea between you know crossing uh, most things together, or the way that uh, Egyptians kind of uh, presented themselves, or or at least their their gods, that was a that was a big thing. So seeing Horus based Osiris again, it's not completely silly, but but it did trigger me immediately. I was like, what is this junk? Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, moving moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, uh, back into the T Web. The the trailer is absolutely exciting, and yeah. we can sit here and um, talk all of the spin foil stuff all of the time. But seventeenth uh, of uh, correction, the seventh of October, uh, October November. I'm an idiot. November seventh of November. Um, the faction rally returns. Uh, it goes to the thirteenth of November. The four guns are added to each faction's lead pool. The new monarchy reward is a sword. <laughs> A future war cult is fusion rifle. Dead orbit is a grenade launcher, and the change into the faction rally rewards um, strikes is an increase of tokens. The nightfall rewards is ten to eighteen tokens, and less tokens from public events and tokens from lost sectors. So I can see, I I can I can see where they're going for it because the people just farmed public events first time around, as far as I'm aware. So yeah, that yeah. is something that they're going to change, which is good. I like that. But it is kind of still a little bit frustrating because the strikes, you can get three of the same strike in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to work that out. Just, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There, there are a few things that they could adjust that make strikes a little bit more um, appealing, I guess you could say. Um, like I, I love the strikes. I love the banter between, let's say, in the Pyramidian between um, uh, Ikora and uh, Asher. You know, talking about how she's an idiot and talking about a Radiolarian lake, and they're like, "What lake?" Like just carrying on like a pork chop, you know, like all that sort of okay. thing. But um, yeah, I, I can see what they're going for. But at this point in time, I'm pretty sure that I'll probably just farm Nightfall, maybe farm the uh, the public events still. Yeah, but I, I mean, just... at this point, who is not going to join a New Monarchy? I think that that raises a valid point, Matt, because we called for the Dead Orbit victory forever right when when it was first announced we said dead orbit will nearly win this every time and then they changed mm -hmm. the reward to a shitty grenade launcher by comparison I, to a sword I, and a fusion and it's like bungee going want that. you know what i'm still i'm still going dead orbit fuck you <laughs> and you know what if I, I win you can buy your fucking grenade launcher <laughs> this is the thing i i can't see their you're going to have some fat, true hardcore Faction Rally fans. But for the most part, yeah. it is always going to be seeing what fa what what weapon do I want from what faction and I'm just going to jump ship. And I don't know how can... I don't feel like that gives a sense of like allegiance to a faction and having a proper Faction Rally if there's like clearly a better item being up for grabs. I mean, the new... Of course, like, I want the new Monarchy Sword. I want to see what that looks like. Um, in comparison to a grenade launcher, unless it's like surprisingly different archetype from most of them, maybe needs to be close to what's the, the prospector or something like that. That's like full auto and uh, proximity reminds or whatever it does. Like if it's not that, then there's no point even yeah, exactly. bothering. Do you think that this but could be remedied by like if they bring out a weapon for each faction that you could win and the faction that wins their members get their weapon for free and then the other like you have to pay for the other two if you want them rather than just not being able to get them at all 
Like well, so, well, you, you then, can. then you were competing you to get a weapon for free. Well, you, can't you not buy it? Like if say New Monarchy lose this time round, then no one gets a sword, right? No, you can buy it. You can buy it for fifty thousand, isn't it? I thought no. you could. They, no, you can no, only you buy the one that wins. They, it's they oh, were like yeah, misrepresenting okay, yeah. that the first time that they did the rally because that was my understanding as well. I was like, oh, it'll just cost fifty thousand for the others. So I'll just you know if I if I lose, I just buy it for fifty thousand. Uh, the pulse rifle for fifty thousand from FWC. That's fine. No. The only okay, thing is yeah. that that faction gets that that single one. That's the only one up for grabs, no matter what. Yeah, so, I mean, if they're going to have a, a new monarchy saw that looks just really cool, there's no way that you, you're not going to want new monarchy to win. Yeah, I can't see it. I'm calling it. Well, I'm calling new monarchy it, right now. And, and granted, well, I mean, I uh, people will... From... People... Oh, sorry, Matt, go on. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I, I would look at it from the sake of... Uh, the the vacancy though being a very popular one because that's basically what FWC's pul- uh, fusion rifle looks like, and fusion yeah. rifles are pretty dang powerful at this point. Just gonna point that out. If so, it's anything like the main ingredient, right they'll now, win. Everybody. Yeah, but the thing is, wh- why if it's the same as a main ingredient, then it's just a skin, and the future world cult skin looks disgusting. <laughs> and if you are going for skins, then. A, no, a new yeah. monarchy sword skin is very unique. Like that is at the moment, I think one of the, easily yeah, the most yeah, unique sort of piece up up for grabs. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what the uh, the sword is that looks like it. Because aside from the new monarchy emblem, there is a sword that looks exactly like it. Yeah, it's I've got it on my hunter. It's not the. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't but, know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean. Thing, but I agree with your point, Matt, earlier that basically it's kind of funny that they, they want factions to be this thing that you ascribe to, but then yeah. sort of force you to reassess your uh, allegiance based on, you know, oh, what am I going to get out of it? It, it just doesn't seem, yeah. it seems counterintuitive to me. And I think that, like, if you were competing each time faction rallies came around to, like, win your gun for free, and then everyone else had to pay if your thing wins, then you, you were like, okay. No, I'm I'm a member of this. I want to beat the other things. But as it stands, it'll be like, no doubt. I mean, I'm pretty sure New Monarchy will pick this one up because everyone will be like, I don't want a fucking grenade launcher. You know, there'll be a huge shift. So I'd, I would, I don't know. I mean, there's things like that. We, we, we can come up with something every week to, to sort of nitpick about. Yeah. But it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's, Chat, I, chats, I dare say it'll change. responding to where that's from. And mm. Negative Edge sounds right to me. And Trader's Fate, and I know I think Trader's Fate was a DLC one, in the pre-order one. So there, there could, I mean, there could be something like that. Like I look, I can't say for certain because I need to go back and have a look. But if it's the same aesthetic as the DLC one, which you can only get in the pre-order, well, then that even has more value. Yeah. But I have a fe- I do have a feeling that you can just get it from completing the campaign. But it is a really sweet looking sword as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is negative space actually, minus the the new monarchy logo, of course. But yeah, that's the same frame. Okay, it's the same as negative space. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's right. I think it's completion of the campaign. All right. Yeah. So whatever. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. The one that mm-hmm. Cade gives you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. No, I only did it the other night on PC, so it's, it's within a week. It's still within my memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's out of your fucking memory. Yeah. And even start here. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Does that, does everyone, have, like, are we cool with that? Do we, is this, do you think faction rallies are going to change? I guess that's the biggest question. You know, we've seen them and they already announced that they're looking at Iron Banner, that is one of the other sort of cyclical events, and that they're rethinking it. Do we, do we think that we're going to see changes to faction rallies as well? Look, the, 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 this is what I think, right? Everything needs to be on an even keel with the incentives to get. You know, put it this way, right? What if there was a sword, this this new faction one, for each each faction, a new monarchy one, a dead elbow one, and a future war cult one? Don't you think that would give a lot more allegiance to people's factions? Like, dude, I, I really want a dead orbit. A dead orbit, as in that's the thing that describes the weapon. I want a dead orbit sword. Yeah. Give them a little bit of different aesthetics, like dead orbit can be all busted up because they want to get off planet. New monarchy can have the king feel, and future war cult can have this disgusting colors and look like a clown sword. Okay, so <laughs> give 
give them the feel of wanting to be part of that faction. Because I guarantee if they did that, oh man, people would be like, dude, you fucking, you better not grind for new monarchy because I really want that dead orbit sword, man. I want that dead orbit. Like, do you know? Like, yeah. right now, I, I don't feel like the weapons represent the factions in a way that is motivating to, to participate. I'll pay that, well, Sassy. I want a f- future war called Balloon Tube Sword. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hate you all with your FWC hate. Uh, oh, right. Come on, it's not that bad. I mean, <laughs> you're a warlock before that too, Beard, so come on. like I know, I'm everything you hate. I get it, Log. <laughs> I don't hate. I just strong dislike. Oh, yes. All right. Okay, that's Slothy, that's what's next, man? All right, so that's about it for news this week, guys. Oh, glasses, please. Thank you. Um, that's about uh, that's it for news this week. But uh, we, we'll move right into our uh, little bit of content review this week. Now, uh, I'm going to start with mine first, just in case anybody else has it. But <laughs> uh, see this see this buffet here in the top right corner? Yes. <laughs> so I, uh, I watched his This Is Not Anna Bray video because a lot of people on Twitter – we're up in arms about this little iron wolf thingo on this woman's shoulder. And uh, it's definitely worth a watch. So please uh, click on this link in the chat. The same one, I think, as well, right? Do we want to talk time. about it? Do we want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt, please, I, I won't do it justice, mate. I won't do it justice. Please let us know the, the TLDR of it. Okay. TLDR is... Uh, Clovis Bray is a person and a corporation, big giant corporation during the Golden Age, suspected mm-hmm. to create the war mines from Cade's journal, but likely took human consciousness and put it into an XO. Um, had a large family. Although never, I mean, everyone just sort of says that his daughters. I don't think it was actually ever said. I, 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 this Elsie Bray, Anna Bray, Willa Bray. <laughs> We're always assuming that they're his daughters and not multiple wives. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, look at me, he's canon. <laughs> and um, like he had, yeah, had a son too, Clovis Brad II. And Dr. Willow Bray developed uh, SIVA and engram encryption techniques and, and uh, much that influenced Dark sort of Golden Age, um, hints at them developing the war mines, etc. Anna Bray is brought back up again in the tower. So Anna Bray is at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. And also there is a item called, uh, it's from the Twilight Gap and it's called White Beard. What's the item? What's the cloak called? Uh, Anna Bray's Oh, um, 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 strength, strength of the pack. Strength of the pack. So yeah, strength, of the, strength of the pack, uh, Hunter Cloak from D1 has a wolf symbol on it. Mm-hmm. And it mentions Anna Bray in it. And it was a pattern worn by Anna Bray during Twilight Gap. She was at Twilight Gap. She's actually introduced in D1 during the No Time to Explain quest line where you have to go into the Vault of Glass. You collect Praetus, not ghosts. You collect ghost fragments. You actually find Praetus' ghost. You go to Lakshmi 2. She's, you go backwards and forwards. You end up going to Twilight Gap. These things are coming through time. One includes a warlock, uh, a bracelet from Anna Bray, which has the Bray family symbol. And also there is a ring from the Warlock Pujari. And also you work out that she's a golden gun hunter. And for some reason, these pools of light are actually coming through time. And you sort of have to jump around on them. Um, So I guess the main connection was the wolf symbol or whatever that was on her shoulder pad, which was very subtle. People locked onto that. And it does look very similar to the cloak of the strength of the pack, which mentions Anna Bray. So that's the that's sort of the main sort of connection. And then you sort of <clears throat> chuck in all like Clover's Bray stuff and Warmind stuff and Vex stuff and time travel stuff on top of that. And you can sort of sort of forge a theory from that. Um, the opposite side of that conversation is, well, it was just a pattern that she wore. It's not actually necessarily her specific symbol. And we know that wolves in general in Destiny have been used to represent lots of different stuff. Iron Wolves, uh, Strength of the Pack, Galahorn, the Wolf Pack rounds. Uh, it, typically, to, considering that was such a like a major battle, it was about Guardians forming an allegiance and fighting together like a Wolf Pack. So that's a very too long, didn't read, sort of rebuttal to the Anna Bray theory. 
And well, to, like I said, I I, I, I I really enjoyed it, and I don't get a lot of time to uh, to actually sit down and watch shit on YouTube. I say shit, but I, I like <laughs> good stuff on YouTube that actually fucking interests me um, outside of uh, these two gentlemen. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out framings. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, guys, I, I highly recommend going and watching Beard and Matt. Um, My favourite thing yeah, when, it's... like, controversial shit like this comes up is watching fucking Anon explode on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> oh <God. laughs> wow. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Holy crap. I, like, I love Anon. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's, such a, he's such a good dude, but, God damn, he just went... He just no brain explosion. He just yep. he he believes what he believes, man. And if you don't believe it, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I, right, I, I sort of I was gonna for Anon. I was gonna bait him. I was gonna bait him and just come in and like try and. And I'm like, oh, I can't. It's like me entering a fucking boxing contest with one arm tied behind my back trying to lure off against him but you know it's just I appreciate that he's out there he just feels he's so passionate about it that he can't help but let it overflow from time to time it's it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing <laughs> and you'll have to you'll have to report on us and see what um, Bife says as well Matt because I know that he believes on the other side of the coin doesn't he Oh yeah, I mean that there um, there are there are some good things uh, supporting Anna Bray, um, particularly when it comes to this this like Bray family members going missing and disappearing, and there's also like new scannables in IO or Nessus, come which one that that has like oh Anna Bray's been dicking around with this data from the War Mind. And we don't know when she did that, and if that was sort of during her time period or if that's more previously. But I, I guess considering Osiris is coming up and time traveling, we've already gone back and we've seen him go back in the Vulpa glass, and there's guardians around in there. So, do you know if there's something funny going on there? They can e. This is the thing. Time travel allows any yeah. sort of they story can wreck. They can wreck on everything. everything. Yeah, it just, it just wins everything. It's just Tommy Wami, bang, they're back. Mm. They so, could rewrite the entire Twilight Gap or any other battle that ends up happening that could influence the, the past of Destiny, and then all of a sudden we see an alternative past to it. Um, and just to interject a couple other things, we don't know if that uh, Bray symbol is like a clan, because it's said it's like a house Bray. That's how yeah. Lakshmi ends up meaning it as, which, yeah. if we know anything about Fallen Houses, if it follow, uh, follows the same idea... That is more of like a clan or some kind of uh, indoctrinated group. Uh, mm. But as of current within uh, what we know of the, the lore so far, I think it's fairly safe to say Anna Bray is confirmed dead versus Ephrodite where we never found a body nor did we see any kind of battle where it happened. That's been the, the argument where Ephrodite like ended up disappearing. She disappeared without a trace. Anna Bray has traces left behind to say she died. She is being remembered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the that was the other thing that was was really tricky to find because it was actually in the dialogue from Lakshmi two when you progress through the no time to explain storyline and unless you had previously gone back and played that mission for whatever reason in D one or you had captured it in D one or you had like me spent multiple hours watching YouTube videos for someone who had accidentally recorded what. Lakshmi there's two a, said, "There's a, a Reddit post about it with pictures, Matt. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, and on that note, I moving see, on. <laughs> Log, I see that you've got your little thing in there in the Google Google Doc. I What's absolutely yours, mate? do. Mine, without any element of surprise or shock or whatever, is Man in Arms Darcy video from through the week. Oh yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes." Oh, you know what, they, how to take a gun that no one gives a fuck about and make people want to use it. It is just the most over-the-top, ridiculous spruik of a gun that does Can fucking... Can you post it? I want to watch it. It's in the, it's in the thing. I'll, I'll put it in the... It's in, in the... the okay. it's, I'll, put, I'll put it right now. I'll put it into the, into the stream chat. But um, it is... I don't want to go in and try and paraphrase any of it, but literally every fucking five seconds, there is a memorable quote that you can write down and unleash at your family at a later time and they'll be like, oh my God, you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't Matter Arms jump from like 80 subscribers to like 1.3K? 
Yeah, he had it really he, bad. He, he had about five hundred, and then someone posted it on Reddit for him, and then I saw him in the comments right. going like, "Hi, yeah, uh, thanks for posting this," and then just yeah, I'm off back into the wind. Is this? It's just the best dude. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. He um, he just doesn't give he, a fuck. He he, li- he literally he come in he come into uh, a, a, a Discord that were the three of us, as in Matt Log and I, frequent, and he said, "Nah, dudes, thank you so much for the support." And basically, the general consensus back to him was, "You make good shit." Stop fucking, stop, stop acting <laughs> humble. You make fucking really, really good stuff, dude. It's very, very, it's, it's just, very, very funny stuff. It's just unique. It's you know, just, like, there's nothing else like very, it. And like, yeah. I know, I know how long he spends working on these things and writing out. I mean, there's that many words in it to even write out the screenplay for that is like just fucking sheets and sheets and sheets. It's nuts. Yum. So go and enjoy it. If you're after a laugh, I'm going to watch it after this because technical difficulties. I mean, it may not even load. That's probably what I'm. That's reality I'm faced with. But Get that's my, rid of Microsoft Edge, you penis. Yeah, I'm going oh to. My God. Oh my God. Trust me. Matt, man, what's your. We'll save the best for last. Matt, what's your. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw Blessy's video. He made a 90s Destiny 2 Curse of Osiris commercial. And it's. Yes. <laughs> It's so fucking left of field, but it's so funny. Uh, it, it's just like, where did that come from? But it was thoroughly entertaining. It, it, he's got just, I don't know, just watch it. It's, it's only like maybe three minutes long or something like that. But oh, classic, classic, I'll put it in chat. Classic, classic and, lessons. And, and Beard, what's what's your video? I see, I see it here. That it's something to do with Nintendo, but uh, what is your video, my oh, friend? Slot's ready to jump down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's actually this, and I, I think I've talked about him a couple times in different places, but uh, there is a guy on YouTube that is now using a Muppet to actually do his reviews. Like he does, the, the Muppet is the thing doing the talking. Obviously he is, but the Muppet is the thing talking to you. And he's called Arlo. Uh, and obviously, of course, this is a very unique way to actually deliver uh, reviews or any kind of content <laughs> realistically in the, the fashion that it is. But what he does is mainly talk about Nintendo stuff, uh, be it for the Switch or something like that. Uh, he does a lot of reviews related to that. Uh, but it's just it's this unique presentation of how he does it that I just I can't get over. Uh, I was I was always a big fan of the Muppets when I was younger, so kind of watching him do this is kind of cool. Uh, I know it's not Destiny related in the least, but it oh, is just fine, it is just something I have to like constantly call out because it's so it's so cool how he does this, and I'm like I don't know who else could like effectively like put this together as well as he did, uh, and especially like translate it over to to something like the medium of YouTube. Um, mm. He does live streams and a couple other things too, and he does he does he, he live streams with a fucking he, muppet on his hand. Or? He can actually go ahead; it's like large enough where he can uh, place his hands inside of the muppet and actually go ahead and like control the <laughs> uh, like whatever he's playing with, which is fantastic. Uh, I think he's actually got now. He said uh, two different versions. He has one that's smaller, uh, and he has one that was actually custom made to be larger. Uh, so for the the larger stuff, he's actually able to do that. But it's like, it, it's super cool how he does this, and he does have it for like pictures and shows and everything like that. But he'll still be like himself. Of course, you can actually talk with him while he's like out at uh, conferences and everything. Just feels like a fantastic individual. I've watched his content now for like over a year. He's blown up, uh, and rightfully so because he's uh, he, he seems like a very on it. Arlo, uh, A R L O. Uh, but it's this is blue Muppet, and it's just it's funny <laughs> seeing him do this stuff. It's just hilarious. Gaming, yep, Arlo game. Uh, there's Arlo, Arlo gaming, and then there's plays? Arlo regular. Yeah. Mm. Do we? Oh, do, we do you think uh, we need a law long. Muppet? Or have we already got one? <laughs> Dude. We need a law yeah, Muppet. it's fucking this buffet up here. <laughs> <laughs> Down under yeah. law Muppet. <laughs> I'll, uh, oh my I'll, god, that looks amazing! I'll actually uh, <laughs> share the link, man. Yeah. Share the link. Get, get them in okay. there, guys. Mylan is a law muppet, absolutely, <laughs> guys. Uh, As opposed to a regular it, muppet. 
absolutely been a fucking, stuff. absolutely been an amazing fucking uh, an amazing uh, week this week. Like as Sin said last week, we are definitely on the upswing of Destiny Two, and regardless of what you think of the um, regardless of what you think of uh, content being released three, uh, two months after the fact, it is exciting. Yeah, can we talk about exciting. that? Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah. I, I'm now, like, uh, I don't get it. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give a bit of backstory here, guys. I'll give a bit of backstory. Now, again, no names. Please, no names in the YouTube comments or in the Twitch chat, please, guys. Um, we are just reporting on what was said. We don't want any sort of blowback back on us. We're just telling you what we know. All right. There was a particular gent on Twitter who is very, very large, who uh, him and some of the community leaders of Destiny... Um, uh, were very upset that the PC was what two weeks ago that it was released a week ago yeah. no yeah, yeah a week two ago weeks. Two, two weeks ago they're, they're week about. and they already and then this week just gone there are already uh, the the next DLC is ready the trial the the curse of Osiris is ready and people were very upset with that because um, they've just released the game and people are like saying well, why wasn't this content in the main game? And uh, why why wasn't this uh, why wasn't this uh, in part of the main game? Why is it so close to the initial release and all that sort of thing? Now, my thoughts on it, my personal thoughts on it, this isn't the podcast as a whole. This is just Sloth, Adam, talking to you. I touch my hand. Um, it's uh, the. It, these people who have been uh, who have been uh, uh, like just hating this, like who just throwing hate on it on on Destiny at the moment, is because it's the flavor of the week. Because no, Destiny was two PC was released two weeks ago. These people who may or may not have played Destiny one, who may or may not have put in a few thousand hours or a hundred hours or fifty hours or ten hours, because then their chat said. Oh, we want to see something else, and they go back to countless stuff. Fuck, whatever, whatever. Um, they're 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 basically saying they're basically saying, oh, why why is there paid content right? Why is there paid um, content right now? Well, if you actually went out and bought the game and then bought the digital deluxe edition, you'd know why. Because there, and if you look into the history, D one vanilla three months later. Guess what? Dark Blow came out. Yeah, I think you know Bungie what. Too, ladies and gentlemen, and it's, it's not just Bungie. Bungie. It's not just Bungie either. You've got to remember that there's a fucking hell of a lot of games, and they do this. There's a fucking science behind it. Rolling content mm-hmm. like this keeps games alive. If you come out and go, Absolutely. guess what? Here's one release. See you fucking next year. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's not the way people want to engage with content. It's not the way people fucking work. Not everyone has the time to commit to huge fucking things, just one off. Like, you know, if you can drip feed, get people involved, give people reasons to come back. I mean, yeah, there's, there is a side of the community that can say, oh, that's insidious. You're sort of forcing people to do this and forcing people to pay for content and all that. And I'm like, dude, it's cheaper than going to the movies. Seriously. Yeah. That's not the fucking... The amount, of, the amount of hours that at least the four of us... Have put into Destiny One, it's it it absolutely worth it. I have over eighteen hundred hours. Matt probably has over four thousand hours because he's in there doing orbit carries and all that sort of thing as well. <laughs> Lots of hours, hours. But it's got good, so many bloody hours. Like it was, I think a lot of people fail to remember that Destiny is primarily, or well, Destiny One rather, was primarily a console game. And if you didn't get it on console when D Two was released. Well, of course the DLC is going to be later because they released the PC uh, PC port later. Yeah. Uh, the, the DLC is going to be immediate because the PC port was later. As far as I'm concerned, these particular people are just hating on the game and hating on the community because it's the flavor of the month. Yeah. I'm... And the community leaders who are who are joining them in this, um, you should be. It's disappointing, man. Well, I mean, you should you well, should be no, ashamed. I think. Because I you are there's... the community leaders, you are the ones that organise massive charity events for, like, as the Destiny community, and then you are the ones who are very vocal and joining the um, the vocal minority of the major major content creators out there and actually yelling at people for defending 
a game that they love with a game well, that look, actually gave uh, you exactly what you have. This Please. is the thing, though. I think I think um, criticism is fine, though. Like I think as a gaming community, there are certain things that where I, you know, it's fine to be offended by them and have an opinion by them. And and oh, you know, that, let's that, say that. let's say with like you know the the IP with the matchmaking and putting people that have spent money with haven't spent money, and I. If your opinion is that this DLC should have been free or that this DLC should have been included as the first package, I don't think it's unreasonable to be upset by that um, because I think there's always that big corporation of Activision behind it. And if anything, if there's more people outraged by it, hopefully we get more content from it. Um, let me just let me just stop you right there. With if if you want something to be enraged about what Activision has done. Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah. There are you open your loot boxes on a, a in a public space yeah, where everyone else can see it. Yeah. And then there's this bloody this thing that came out last week. That happened. I thought yeah, and then there was this thing that came out last week with the patent about uh, the patent about the um, the matchmaking to matchmaker you against players who have better weapons. Right. This is not insidious by Activision at all. This is just the way the game industry, especially them, and especially with Bungie and Destiny, as as a whole series, this is the way that it's been done. If you don't like it, vote with your wallet. If you don't like it, have an opinion. But don't go and bloody downvote things on Blizzard or Reddit or Twitter or anything like that just because it's the flavour of the month. I'm sorry. The, the, the community leaders who basically got their start on Twitch or YouTube from this game and then not actually defending it. But uh, like, uh, not def I'm not so sorry, I'm not angry that they're not defending it. I'm angry that they're not putting their constructive criticism. They're just joining in and the destiny shit and it's bad and fuck, look, really? Pull your fucking heads in. Oh, I don't know, Sloth. I don't know if I agree with that. Sorry. I'm sorry. I feel pretty oh, strong. We don't have that. to. We don't have to agree. But look, okay, look, if, if I was really honest with myself, I'm talking like really honest, okay? If I didn't have a YouTube channel and I wasn't streaming Destiny, would I still be playing it? I don't know. Would you? No, I don't think I would. I don't think there's enough for me to do. That appeals to me. That's, that's fine. fair enough. That's just that's, that's just enough. my thought. Like I don't feel like there's enough content in there that I really enjoy. I don't really enjoy doing strikes. The patrols were fun for the first part, or the exploration was fun for the first part. Um, nightfalls are absolutely just bullet sponges, pain in the ass. I enjoy raiding. Okay, if I had a good clan, I would probably get on just to raid. And to be honest, that's pretty much all I do anyway on streams because I really enjoy doing that. And streaming has different content with it because you're talking to people and that's what makes it a game and i i i yeah if i was really honest with myself, i probably would be playing other games right now but also that's also part of my personality too like i've never really got obsessive about certain games i always like just keep jumping from game to game and game so it's also that's sort of part of of my personality oh, don't get too, me wrong, don't get me wrong. Game, so. you you enjoy what you enjoy if you enjoy playing barbie's bloody party house then you enjoy it. If you enjoy playing Destiny, like I do, Log does, Beard does, you do, for the most part. Like obviously, Log, Matt, and I, uh, and Beard, we have our different enjoyment out of it because I enjoy it because I love talking to people. Matt is the same way. Log is the same way. I'm pretty sure Beard is the same way as well. But that's our enjoyment. Don't fucking hate on us or abuse people on Reddit or abuse people on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Because because we enjoy a game that you don't. I think do I Slothy, fucking yell at Slothy. you? Fucking, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. You're all right. Slothy, yeah. at the end of the day, the thing, and I know what you're pissed off about. I know exactly what you're pissed off about, and I know what it is. The thing that fucking is the most disheartening about it all is it takes one dickhead with a huge profile to come in and speak shit about Destiny, and all of the fucking suck-ass people in our community who just want to be noticed by them go, yeah, nah, Destiny shit, isn't it? Ah. Oh. That is the part of it that is, that, that's what we're really upset about. And ultimately, look, if that's your opinion, that's fine. You're allowed, you're welcome to it. But it speaks to your character and not particularly like well. So 
that's it. Anyway, let's not get bogged yeah, down I've, in fucking negative yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sorry, so well. sorry. We'll sorry. We'll so well. That's, I do apologise. I do apologise. I, I feel very strongly about that, and that's probably not yeah. the place I, or the time. To I'll admit so that I, I get, I do get rankled by people who I'm like, you know, Counter Strike streamers coming in. Oh, I've played Destiny for one day. Here are my criticisms, and it gets more traction than fucking people who've spent their lifetime playing this shit, more or less. Like. I'm not saying that they're not entitled to an opinion. It's just, I guess it's just the loudest voice gets the most attention or, you know, there's already, they already have an audience. So it is what it is, but it's unfortunate. And I just, I just wish people would just fucking just give up on the whole bitching about things thing. <laughs> just leave it for a week. It'd be fucking refreshing. Yeah, yeah. But, Being an old gamer to begin with, I've, I've known this for, for years. Everybody is going to know something or, or enjoy something different from everybody else. Where games are basically built for the sake of different appeasements and different ideas, and yeah. that's why, e even if you look at it from the trend of the mic of the microtransactions, the loot boxes, everything like that, it's an idea that I am going to play this game versus not play this game. So yes, that company is still going to ask for stuff from me for the games that I decide to play, uh, yeah. while I avoid the other five games that they may publish. And I get that entirely in that respect, and that's why they're kind of looking at it from that perspective. But when all is said and done, there's plenty of new titles that are being made. There's plenty of new games that are out there. I am frankly looking very forward towards Monster Hunter Worlds. Uh, .hack GU Last Recode just came out yesterday. I need to play that game for my childhood's sake. There is so many new stuff, so much new stuff that's out there. And if you just don't like what it is that's there, then yes, find something yeah. else that's you. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like get, it's like it's a it's a bottomless well. We can just plumb yeah, it. It is absolutely. <laughs> and and I'll, absolutely I, obviously, well. I have I have added my criticism in. I've got like three videos up right now within mm -hmm. the last month that have effectively said the same thing. I am I am very critical of anything Destiny because I care for it, yeah. but I'm never 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 gonna just you know shit down its throat or whatever. I love the game that much. All yeah, right. but this it's, is what we said it, last it, time. You, uh, you love the community. That's the thing about Destiny. Is yeah. like I don't think, and, and this is sort of why I say about like not playing is I don't think the platform by itself stands well enough. And you you wonder why yeah. people have come into it and they have criticism. Well, because they don't have the community behind them. You know, part of it is to have those friends to play with, and that's why I enjoy the raid so much. I enjoy talking to people and teaching people and, and sharing the excitement of getting tokens drop when you beat that boss that shit yes got that mm -hmm. token mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say, like, basically at the top of the no, show it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like we talked at the top of the show like we we were saying like yeah we're we're trying to get invested in pc but it's kind of hard to get invested in pc it's, it's and it's exactly all because thing. we don't have the the community behind it exactly yeah, yeah. i think that's and the so, part of it i mean that... i want Destiny to be engaged wouldn't it be great if Destiny was engaging without always having buddies. So just just real quick to, to talk on the the community as well for for the sake of Destiny's sake or whatever. Saint Jude, what, when did where did we end up raising last year for them? Like it was two point four million or something like that. I think. Uh, I, I, I it was it was well one. over a million dollars. It was well yeah, over a million I, dollars. I think yeah. it was like one point four. Like 1.4. Mm. Okay. I, I thought it came close to about two, but I, I could be wrong with Final Tally. Anyway, I know for a fact that Best Buy, uh, the company here in the U.S., ended up raising $18 million. And as people that basically can talk to uh, more customers on a, on a larger basis, if you will, ask for donations, just somebody tapping the random dollar donation button while they walk in and buy a freaking movie or something like that versus streamers and people that are dedicated and say, yeah, I'll give five bucks on a stream. That speaks volumes to the fact that there is a game that is out there that can otherwise raise a portion. 1.4, 1.5 million, no matter what the amount might be, that is how dedicated this little community is and how close-knit it is. And nobody should ever question that. I, I think, think that is what is always going to be that important about it. I think, you know what, now that you mentioned that, and I think that's probably the thing that we're all having the hardest time adapting to is that at the end of Destiny 1's life cycle, the community was a largely positive place because it was full of solely yeah. that group of people. 
Yeah. And, and now that it's kind of flooded, it, I, like I didn't expect it, it, it'd have this kind of impact in in terms of it, it really is just a salty shit of a place to be, at least Reddit and things like that. But I mean, what you what you say, Beard, it stands testament to the fact that this community at its bare bones is a fucking good one, and ultimately that's yeah. what we're all proud to be part of. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. see what we did there. We brought a full touchy feely <laughs> all the way around. Give yourself a big hug. That, that there's that full that full that full full three hundred and sixty of sloth being an angry old fart, and um, <laughs> then uh, then we bring back the the upswing. But ladies and gentlemen, I think that draws it very very close to the end of the cast. Now, gentlemen, what are your plans for this week, Matthew? Okay, so after spending an hour this morning getting shadow play working, which I think it is. <laughs> I'm going to finish IO campaign and then I'm going to go back and play through every adventure on Nessus and IO and then I'm going to go collect every scannable and then I'm going to finish editing a Vex video with Osiris for tomorrow. And, and so basically you're going to get a message XLR. at 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to get a message at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Hey, do you want to play some PUBG? Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, you can already see that there's too much work in there to fit into one fucking day. And so it's pro- that is, I, I'm going to get to a point where I'm like, okay, this video is not happening between now and the release. So I'm going to put it off to Wednesday. That's going to be the next one. Sloth, you around? Want to play my beer? What are you up to this week, my dude? Uh, right now, my plan stands. Uh, I have been asked several times now to put my four videos on the nine into a single video. And I'm finding that that is ending up being a larger editing nightmare than I thought it was going to be. But I'm going to make it happen. Uh, I basically lost some of the I have no way that I can move like all of the videos into like one video and have the raw stuff there and just like edit things down. No way. So I have to basically get crafty and and change out some stuff with audio. I'm getting into semantics about editing. This is boring. Um, the <laughs> that's that's other a lot. Then. That I, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, but for uh, for what I'm doing there, after I do that, I then have uh, another video that I have that is voiced at the moment uh, and done, and it is on the foundries. Uh, we haven't really looked into the uh, weapons foundries too much. I have 11 pages worth of information that I voiced and now have to edit down. Uh, and then from there, that video is going to probably go up this week as well. So between those two videos and about 30 some, 40 some hours of work this week, uh, I am I'm done for the week. Like that's my week, definitely. <laughs> Slothy, what do you got on, man? What are you doing? Uh, this week probably a little bit more of the same. We'll finish or oh, got to continue on with Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, if I can feel better at some point or other, you know, yesterday's stream had to cut really short because I've been struggling with uh, running myself. Uh, at, what was it you said? Look, burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. Um, just really struggling with that. So try and get some sleep. Um, doing a raid tonight with the Sin City Stream Team, uh, which is organised by Doma Dima, which should be good fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, so just doing the usual shit, no YouTube because uh, I can't edit for fucking shit, but, um, yeah, just, <laughs> just, like just the usual there. thing of streaming, nah, Good stuff. just streaming and doing the things. Um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be a very easy week. I think. Hey, what are you doing? Logger? Hold on. Beard. Yeah. You know your YouTube channel when it's not Beard Grizzly. Is forward slash user forward slash I dado. You know that? Yes, I do. What is it? And dado is the friggin' thing from. Is that intentional or was that random? No, uh, it is actually a die to sue. Uh, it is r- loosely translated from Japanese great strife, and it was a name okay. that I ran with for a long time. But no, I, I kind of find it that like. I, I do find it funny that like Dido is sitting in there in that name. Kind of. I, mean, I, I was like, "What? He's got You're like." I thought on. that was a random bunch of letters and it formed Dido in your name. I'm like, "Oh my god, Beard's ex, so stranger, oh. and a break confirmed." <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry, log. 
Um, I, don't, I, I have editing plans. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get Trials of Osiris footage, not Osiris. Trials of the Nine footage. Uh, probably tonight. I'm gonna to try and record that and then edit a video through the week. That will. I be... did try to upload that. It was 30 it's, gigs, and it didn't... it's all good, man. It's fine. It's. I don't want Hunter gameplay anyway. I've had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might just feel Seems like legit. I might, might, legit. Det might detract from the quality of my channel. Um. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, uh, yeah. I'm being facetious, but yeah, I'm going to do that. No, I don't know. I'm like, I've been so bad with streaming lately. I'm fu <laughs> I went out for dinner last night and then I got home late. I couldn't be bothered. And, you know, like, it's just, yeah, I'm struggling. So hopefully, if you see me around, just nag me about streaming. When are you going to stream? Just nag me. It'll help. When, when are you going to stream, stream, log? When are you going to stream, mate? Stream? Don't you nag me. When are you going to stream? I'm good at ignoring you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, unfortunately, been... we can't host into anyone because I can't type into Edge. <laughs> so we're just going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> All right, unless, is, there, is there a command slot? Can you host for me or do I have to do it? <laughs> Negative, Ghost Rider, I can't. Right, oh, okay. Well, guess what? That's, that's a thing now. It's sad, isn't it? It's done. Very sad. It's very Actually, dark. no, yes, I can because I, yeah, I can. It's fine. I can. I believe. I believe. Okay. Guys, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, Beard, to have you on, man. Um, thank you again for coming on and actually having a chat with, uh, well, at least me. I don't know why you want to chat to me, but this is the first time that we've had Beard <laughs> on who's actually fucking, when we've been on the same podcast. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a good one. So thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you guys so much again for having me. Any, anytime you want me around, I'm, I'm sure we'll be here with DLC2 at least. Definitely, man. Definitely. Looking forward to getting into the and actual knowns instead of the spin foils, right? Yeah, really. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I told Matt the other day, though, on stream, I was like, I'm more excited for DLC 2 than I am for Curse of Osiris. Just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, well, we're going to hit the music, but thank you very much. We'll see you sometime the next law, week. Just do it. Slow it down, Matt. Slow it down. Just the law will find you. Uh. Oh, the law will find you. <laughs> <laughs> the law will find you. <laughs> uh, we've just oh, shot. So Goodbye, everyone. Watching. See you later. Bye. See Bye. ya. Take care.